Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Uh, it's been a long couple of weeks. I had a horrible stomach bug but I am feeling a little better now and I can't wait to show you what I have been working on before all of this happened. So our victim, I mean our candidate for reparation today is uh, My Little Pony Generation 1 Posey. Now you might notice this pony doesn't look like the usual posy, so to say, and the reason is that this is a UK variant, even though it was also made in Hong Kong. We will talk about the differences soon, but for the moment let me show you what is wrong with this poor baby. So we got quite a few uh, suspicious marks, <laughs> I'll say bites, maybe? But the main problem is the mouth, that seems like it will need quite some repairs, so let's get started. Alright, so the first step, as usual, will be to remove the head. And something I hadn't realized before is that actually this head was glued. So we are looking at a fairly original pony, potentially, or maybe a re-glued one. <laughs> so it seems I will have to use some acetone. And this is something I haven't done in a while, I think, in the channel, using acetone to open a pony's head. If you remember the night glider, <laughs> that didn't go too well, but hopefully I have learned my lesson. And today I'm not going to use an exacto knife to remove the head, I'm going to use a brush, a delicate brush. <laughs> now, because I have been using acetone for so long and for so many things, <laughs> I got curious about what is this substance. And I found one very interesting fact that I will share with you as we complete this process. And it is the following. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know you can actually produce acetone with your body? Not recommending this for pony repairs, by the way. <laughs> but if you don't eat enough carbohydrates, then your body will start breaking down fat reserves. And that makes ketones. And acetone is a type of ketone. Um, I don't know if you have heard of the keto diet. That's where the work comes from. So there you go. Now we know something else about acetone. I'll keep researching and share more <laughs> with you in the future. Alright, now that we have opened the body, it's time to remove all the hair because we will want to replace it with something new. And um, as I mentioned, this is a UK variant, which means that doesn't look like your um, American pony, I would say. They're all made in Hong Kong, but for the American market, it was made a certain way and for the rest of Europe. And the UK one looks different. The standard version has a yellow body and pink hair, as well as pink flowers. You can see the picture right here. But there are lots of other variants for this pony and they're actually beautiful. I'm looking at them now and I think I might start a new collection. For example, there is this Italian one that is light blue and the Venezuelan, oh, the Venezuelan ponies are incredible. You have like this light green one and a pink one, like very strong pink. And there is also the UK version which according to the description that you can find on my little wiki has magenta flowers and this is interesting because the reason for the darker color is because in year four the normal posy was re-released as a so soft pony which is the one with all the flocking and when you have flocking you need darker symbols so you can see them and in this case they left the dark symbols and they removed the flocking and this is why we have a different version I know you like the washing sounds, so I'll sit in the corner for this bit. And this is what it looks like after the first bath. We're going to have a few different cleaning sessions. Although I was a little surprised to see that this mark on the side didn't change at all. And I still wonder what it is actually. But at this point I wasn't too worried about it. <laughs> I will be later. So I decided to use some acetone and see if that can get rid of it. Acetone almost never disappoints, <laughs> but in this case it did nothing. <laughs> it actually, I feel like it the mark stands out more after the acetone because it cleaned everything around it and I left the mark intact. So we'll have to look for an alternative solution. 
But there were some other marks and spots, so I went ahead and I used the acetone to remove all of those. As usual, warning, <laughs> if you're going to use acetone, never ever uh, apply to the eyes or the symbols, because it will erase everything, except those weird red marks. <laughs> And always, always wash the toy with soap and water after you're done because the acetone otherwise will keep like eating into the plastic. It is quite safe to use because it's the same stuff you use for your nail polish to remove it, but if you're going to do this a lot, I definitely recommend you use gloves. So, see how our first wash wasn't super successful, <laughs> I'm going to do another one with OxyClean or OxyActive in this case. I'm using a different brand because I couldn't find the original and, well, confession because this one was cheaper. <laughs> but as you will see, it's actually not a great idea. If you can get the original one, I would recommend that. Although I made a mistake here, the water I used was a bit too cold. I got it from the bathroom instead of boiling it in the kitchen. And as you will see, the result was a bit underwhelming because <laughs> I got no bubbles. <laughs> and I feel like it's the bubbles that have all the magic that, that carry the, the dirt away from the pony. So after a couple of hours like this, I decided to add some boiling water. By this point though, I feel like maybe the powder wasn't effective anymore. <laughs> so I let it rest for another couple of hours. And yeah, we still got no bubbles and <laughs> nothing, but at least the water looks a bit brown, <laughs> which in my eyes means that uh, it has somewhat worked. And here you can see what it looks like after the bath. Um, it's a little better, it's more uniform, I would say. So it's a good start, many steps to follow. Okay, by popular demand, <laughs> this process is not going to be called retrobrating, like it's done with other vintage toys and computers. There are a few different methods for retrobrating. There are actually lots of videos on YouTube of people trying them and seeing what works best. I found that for the ponies, because they are made of vinyl, and vinyl is a very, like I always say, generous material, <laughs> you can actually use this cream, which is also called salon cream, and it's hydrogen peroxide. Very important not to be confused with benzoyl peroxide, which is the one that is in acne cream. Lots of doll restorers use benzoyl peroxide, but that's because the material used for the dolls is different. If you use that for the ponies, it will cause bleaching, severe bleaching that lasts for years and years and years. Alright, as you can see, the red mark is still there. <laughs> so we're going to sandpaper and file it down. I don't normally do this because I don't want to harm the plastic, like destroy anything in the original pony. However, in this case, I'm hoping it will be just a superficial mark and uh, some subtle sandpapering will get rid of it. So let's see. Well, that's looking a little bit better. <laughs> Let's continue. Okay, and this is the result. It's actually not too bad. You can't, you can't really see it anymore. I didn't actually think it would come off, so we learned something new. All right, so before we move on to sculpting, we're going to do a very quick last pass with acetone. I don't know if you can see them, but there are still marks, and I know because this happened with other ponies, this can be removed with acetone, but you need to apply some pressure to it. I think if we had had bubbles <laughs> for the OxyClean, this wouldn't have been a problem. However, mistakes were made. <laughs> but here, I think you can kind of see that, yeah, it does work. There is still a thin layer of something. 
And since we're going to add some repairs using Millipad in the next section, I want this to be very, very clean. While we do this, I will tell you a little something about Posey, this pony. If you have seen the special called My Little Pony Make Your Mark, which is a Generation 5 special, um, you might have noticed, actually, that Posey appears in it. If you haven't, look for a pony that has very, very fuchsia hair. <laughs> Also, Posey was the inspiration for Fluttershy, according to Lauren Faust. Okay, a little note for this next section, and then I will leave you with some music. I tend to use Millipad Epoxy Putty to fill in holes and do repairs and add things to ponies. And what I normally do is use it white as it comes and then paint on top of it. However, the results haven't been stellar <laughs> so far. And I wanted to try something I had tried before without success. <laughs> and that is mixing the acrylic paint with the Millipad before I sculpt. So this is what I'm going to do now. And I think in order for this to work, you need quite good paints. You need good pigments. The last time I tried this, I was using those neon acrylic paints that are super cheap and bad quality. And it, I think what happened, if I remember correctly, is that the pigment ended up on my gloves <laughs> and the Millipad was white by the end of this process. But this time I'm using my dear Vallejo paints and Citadel paints, which are used for minis, for Warhammer minis, and the result luckily was what I was kind of hoping for. The color is not a perfect match. Uh, this is the first time I do this, so I wasn't like too hopeful to get a perfect match, but I think it's close enough that when we paint, it's not going to be as noticeable. So anyway, I'm kind of happy about this development and I want to keep um, trying it and learning more about it. So now I will leave you with a little bit of music and I will see you in the next section or the other one. note ideally if you want to sand or file the millipad you should wait at least i would say maybe 12 to 24 hours so you make sure it's actually really dry because otherwise it might be still like curing inside
right, and now it's time to paint. I will tell you now in advance <laughs> that also I'm not too happy with the result of the paint. My color matching needs so much work. I try, I try, but one of the things is that when the color dries, it changes. So even if I think I have a good match in my palette, which by the way is now ceramic so I can wash it and it's not a mess anymore, um, then it dries and it changes again. And on top of that, and this is not making excuses, but also it is kind of, um, the, the way the camera captures the difference is really dramatic. <laughs> it's not like this in person. Um, but yeah, I understand if you don't believe me. And now for the final step, we're going to rehair and or reroot the tail and the mane. I'm using this white uh, hair, nylon hair, and it's a bit thinner than what I normally use, well, like for the other colors. So I'm not sure what it would look like. Um, we will see soon, <laughs> but I will show you a bit of the process. Um, I always try to record this in a way that so, so you can see like how I uh, grab the hair and how I wrap it around the finger. and and then get it with the needle. Um, I don't think it was super successful, but hopefully you understand. If not, you can ask me any questions and I will try to help.
right, so here is the before. And after some work and lots of color matching, <laughs> successful or not, here is the result. I did the very simple styling that is wrapping the hair around the neck and around the leg, but I think I left it for too many days because this is when I wasn't feeling too well, so in the end it doesn't have much volume. <laughs> also, like I said, this hair is a bit thinner than my usual hair, but excuses, excuses, <laughs> I hope you still enjoyed the video. And I had a lot of fun working on this pony, I learned some new things, so I'm very happy. Thank you again for your support and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great week, bye bye!